The prototype incidentally first flew on the 26th of September 1951, piloted by John Cunningham, well known name in aviation, and uh, it uh, certainly uh, had a bit of a, an incident with that whilst trying to break the sound. Oh, yes, indeed, the, uh, there were quite a few incidents involving the uh, Vixen, and indeed. Yeah, but uh, we'll uh, not harp on that for a moment. Uh, the aircraft made its first arrested deck landing on the fleet aircraft carrier HMS Ark Royal. The line, lovely photo pass coming up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. we can go there. You know where that goes? Uh, yes, the first uh, swept wing aircraft and the first British aircraft to be solely armed with missiles, rockets and bombs. In other words, no guns. And uh, that was a dramatic change, of course, speed and altitude and everything coming to the fore, as opposed to uh, much more close-in combat uh, work. And it was also armed with four de Havilland Fire Streak air-to-air -air missiles, two microcell unguided two-inch rocket packs, and had a capacity of four 500-pound bombs or two 1,000-pound bombs. by two uh, Rolls-Royce Avon 208 turbojet engines that had a speed of 690 miles per hour and a range of 600 miles. So, uh, we're still keeping our eyes on here, as I say, it takes a good bit of space. Now, interesting enough, talking about uh, no guns, uh, uh, the original design did have uh, the fitting of guns in its prospectus, but uh, experiments with the Aiden cannons were carried out, and it was found that their firing caused failure of the mounting due to the force of the recoil. Quite interesting. All sorts of ideas were tried uh, with this recoil issue, but the only solution that seemed to work was to put a bulk of timber in place to absorb the force, and uh, not a very technical solution at all. Uh, so uh, clearly that didn't uh, didn't work. But it was also the last British fighter to use wood in its construction. Well, I mean, just goes to show the versatility of uh, British engineering. It's a good chance to give him away, boys and girls. Uh, all these guys working really, really hard. It's been a hot, tiring afternoon for them, and they're uh, flying it superbly well for us. Well, there you can see the tail hook there just below between the main gear there. Now, one of the aspects we were talking about yesterday is quite notable, and that is that the pilot's canopy is offset to the left-hand side. And the uh, other crew member, who actually was the navigator, was housed in the right-hand side, completely within the fuselage, uh, gaining access to a flush-fitting top hatch into his space well, you can guess what it's probably called. It was the coal hole. Yes, I imagine that. It might have been poured into your aircraft through a hole. Uh, but they did have ejection seats, uh, albeit that sort of uh, rather scary sort of sideways upwards type uh, uh, piece of equipment. Uh, but certainly the uh, the observer, I believe, as he was called in the, in the Navy, he certainly had a pretty tough role using their radar. Uh, to oh, it must have been absolutely horrible. And uh, indeed very fortunate that he did have the seats because, of course... Uh, The uh, interesting thing is, of course, the guys at the back of the Vulcan didn't have the ejection seats in a similar period of aviation training, very tough. Look at that, uh, he's beating up there, using all uh, five, maybe six thousand feet of sky there, that's uh, available to us uh, on request with the London Swanning Control Service. So, uh, thanks very much, you guys, in the air traffic as well. That's uh, very good news. That helps.